Welcome to Tom Teaches YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a YouTube banner using Photoshop. So your first task is to stay organized. So on your desktop, wherever you wanna keep your documents, go ahead and do a new folder. Let's just call it YouTube banner. And then you're going to open up a few things to keep in mind. Whenever you are making the banner, different parts of the banner are actually gonna be visible on different devices. And so your desktop kind of gets a little bit wider. If you're casting onto a TV, it's pretty much the entire thing. And the thing that we're gonna kind of pay attention to is how much is gonna be available on mobile. You wanna make sure everything that you have that's important is gonna be in this little window. So one of the first things that we're gonna to have to do before we get into Photoshop is download a little overlay that's gonna kind of help us know how much of our banner is going to be seen on mobile. So all I searched was YouTube banner size, and then you can click on that, right click, save image as, let me go to the right folder, YouTube banner, let's just call it sizing right there, and click save. Now, um, you'll notice that the size uh, is 2560 by 1440. That's the recommended size for a YouTube banner. So 2560 pixels by 1440. So let's go into Photoshop. You can click on create new, and then I've already got it set to 2560 uh, width and then 1440 height. Yours might say inches or centimeters or something like that. If it does, just change it to pixels and then make 2560 by 1440. We can call this this YouTube banner and let's go to create. Now go ahead and find that folder with your sizing information. So YouTube banner, let's pull this in. And then whenever you see these little like resizing options, if you don't need to make it bigger or smaller, just hit enter. So instead of keeping this on here, we're going to create some lines to help us know where these boundaries are. So let's go to view and you're going to go down to new guide. You want a vertical guide. All it is is a vertical line and then go put it right there on the side. View new guide, another vertical one. Let's drag it over here. And we could create ones for tablet, but I think as long as we stay within these, this is the, the mobile uh, one, that's gonna be what we want. So um, let's go ahead and add another one for the horizontal and bring it down here. And then add one more new guide, horizontal, and bring it down here. So now we can actually hide this or even delete it. You can hide layers. Um, you can actually see that this is the layer with the picture right here. I'm gonna just go ahead and hide it by clicking on the little eye. And I wanna get a background. So I like to go to a website called Unsplash. It's pretty high quality pictures that you can use for free. Um, you can look under wallpapers or textures and patterns. Try to find something that would make a good background image. Something that you can put text on and you think you'll still be able to read the text pretty easily. I found one a little bit earlier that I liked was this unfinished wall paint. I like the dark and the white. So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna say save image as and I'm already in the YouTube banner, so let's just call this wallpaper and save it. Let's go over to Photoshop and let's just click and drag the wallpaper in. Now, I wanted to take up this whole thing so I can grab the corner and drag it. Now, if you're using Photoshop 2019 or later, you can just grab the corner and it stays in the right dimensions and ratios. But if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you're gonna have to hold shift for it to do this. If you don't hold shift, it's gonna, it's gonna kinda do this and distort the photo. You don't wanna do that. So let me undo that. I don't have to hold shift because I have 2019 and I guess they just changed that. I'm gonna extend it out, extend it out this way. Once I'm done resizing, hit enter. Now these lines are where I want to stay in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the name of my channel. Uh, let's do Tom Teaches YouTube. I can click on the T right here and then click where I wanna start typing and just write Tom Teaches YouTube. Now I don't like that font. Uh, I'm gonna click on this little move tool to first off move it. And if you wanna move it to the center, you can kinda of see as you get to the center, this little center line shows up. Um, if I wanna change the font, I can do that over here. Right now it's a font called Brandon Grotesque and it's the light version. Uh, let's do a little bit of a thicker version. Let me pull it up a little bit. If it's kind of like, 
clicking to the grid, um, but you wanna move it a little bit more finely. If you hold control on a PC, I think it might be option or shift um, on a Mac, you can make little finer movements instead of it kind of going to the grid. So you can do those fine movements by holding control or option, I believe, on the Mac. I wanna make this text white. So if I make sure that Tom teaches YouTube, that layer is selected, because if it's not, I don't have those options. The layer with the text is selected. I'm gonna click on my color and I can just drag this to white. What's also cool is if I wanted it to be the exact same color as this white down here, you'll notice that the cursor turns into a little pipette. And if I click there, it actually takes this white. Or if I wanted to click up here, it takes that gray. I obviously don't want, want to do that because I can't see it very well. But I'm gonna go pure white, but that pipette can be kind of useful sometimes. And I'm gonna click okay. Now I'm gonna create another little text box. I can hit T or I can go back over here uh, and click on it. And this one, I'm gonna say, teaching you how to, and then on the next line, create and grow on YouTube. All right, so first, let me go back to the move tool. Um, I kind of want this center aligned, so make sure teaching you how is selected. Click center, uh, meaning it's more, it's kind of more in the middle. Um, as far as the text, it's not lined up on the left side. And I'm gonna bring this down here. Again, I am going to kind of hold control so I can be a little bit more fine with this. And I'm gonna change the size of this. I want creating and growing on YouTube to be the same width as Tom teaches YouTube. So I'm gonna hit T again. I'm just gonna highlight this text. And this is my text size. I can go and change like that, but then that's kind of a guessing game. I don't like doing that, and I don't like having to type in the numbers. So what I do is I hold control, and you'll see that when I hold control, the little there's little arrows that uh, show up. I can actually kind of drag it to the size that I want. So that's about the right size. It's the, the size of Tom Teaches YouTube. And I want a little bit of contrast. Oh, click OK. I want a little bit of contrast. Uh, I want to make this teaching you how to part a little bit smaller. So again, I'm going to hold Control and make that a little bit smaller. And to make it a little bit different from this text, I'm still going to use Brandon Grotesque, but let me highlight all of it. And instead of doing this black version, I'm going to do the light version. And I'm also going to change the color to black. So it's a little bit easier to see. So I think that's starting to look good. It's still within the confines of my boundary. I want to put a little YouTube icon right there. So I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to search YouTube transparent. Um, what that means is the background is see-through. You can tell it's see-through by this little checkerboard. All of these are checkerboard backgrounds versus a background like this is not checkerboard. I'll show you the difference when you actually save this. Let me save this one. Save image as YT for YouTube. And let me save this one too, just to show you why this one's not very good. It's not transparent, YT2. Now go back to Photoshop. Let's first pull in the YT one. All right, it's pretty big. Let me resize. You might have to hold shift if you're using an older version so it stays the right dimensions. But it's, it's, it's pretty much what I'm looking for. So once I'm done resizing, I'm gonna hit enter. Let me show you what happens if you get one that is not transparent. It has got this big white square around it, which I don't want. I just want the part that has the little icon and just YouTube, so that's why you wanna search transparent, or you can also search uh, YouTube PNG, like YouTube icon PNG. PNGs are usually transparent, and you can tell by clicking on it and if it's checkerboard. So I wanna resize my little YouTube icon. To resize it, I can make sure that that little layer is selected, YT. And then I'm gonna hold Control T, and that stands for transform. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, and then I'm gonna make sure it's centered right here, and then hit Enter. Now, the only thing I really wanna do is kind of add a little bit of a, 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 a boundary, a separation between my icon and my background. So come over here to your layers, right click, and click on blending options. One of the popular things with YouTube banners and thumbnails is adding a stroke. So I'm gonna click on stroke and you can kind of see it adds this little white stroke. Uh, you can make the stroke bigger or you can make it smaller. I like 10 um, and I like a white stroke generally. 
Uh, but if you want to edit it, you can see now it's under the effects. You can double click on stroke and then you can kind of change it. If you want it on the inside of the image, it'll go there. If you want it centered, I usually go on the outside and you can change the color of the stroke right here. Let's go with white. Additionally, I want to add a little bit of a shadow because I think it kind of does a cool effect. So I'm gonna click on drop shadow down here and you can actually see it's got that shadow there. I'm gonna keep it as a black shadow. You notice if you hit add distance, it creates more distance between the shadow and the image. If you can add the spread, it makes it a little bit larger. I want this to be subtle. Um, so I'm gonna just do that right there. Lift it up a little, oh, not that, control Z. Let me do a little bit less size, and I think that's pretty good. If your blend mode is uh, anything besides normal, it might not you might not see it very well, so just make sure your blend mode is normal. Um, click OK, and I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. And a cool thing is if you want, pull this up a little bit, hold Control to make it easier. If you want the same effects on your text, um, but you don't wanna have to go through all that again, just right click on the effects from the YouTube icon, Go to copy layer style, and then go to the text that you want that layer style to go on. Tom teaches YouTube, right click, paste layer style. Now that doesn't look very good. I don't like the stroke. So I can either click on the eye so the stroke is gone, um, or I can double click on it and then go in and uncheck it right there. Um, I don't like as much how the, the shadow is kind of going up. So I'm gonna uh, create less distance so it's more centered. Um, and it looks like that. So that creates a little bit of a boundary between the actual text and your background. I like how this looks. Once I'm ready to save it, I can go to File, Save. Let's put it on our in our YouTube banner. And this is just the Photoshop file. So I'm gonna save the Photoshop file so that way if I ever wanna come back and make changes to it, I can. Now, if I wanna actually save the image that I can upload onto YouTube, you can go to File, Export, Quick Export as PNG. I'm gonna put that in the same spot, youtubebanner.png, save. Head back to your YouTube channel and then click on Customize Channel. It'll bring you here so you can click on Customize Channel. And then if you hold your mouse, you'll see this little pencil up here. Click on that pencil, Edit Channel Art, upload your photo. It is youtubebanner.png. And it looks good on all three. If you need to adjust the crop, you can, but I don't need to because I made those lines intentionally so that way it would fit. Click select and you've got your banner right there. And that's how you make a YouTube banner using Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, I've got another video on how to use a free software called Canva to make your banner. If you'd like to stay in the loop with any upcoming videos on creating and growing on YouTube, then go ahead and subscribe. This is Tom Teaches YouTube and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.